when I was, uh, you know, playing in my first main event in 2006, all I really cared about was making it through the first day. I was down to 3,000 at the dinner break, and I built it back up to 50,000 with an hour left, and that was the top 10. Um, so I was fine. I was locking it down, sure. and all of a sudden I got involved in a hand and had to make a call with a flush and a straight on the board with bottom set for all my chips, and that was probably the greatest hand of the tournament for me because it put me really in the top, you know, I was chip leader then in the top 10 for the first three days and I was actually never all in, never at risk for the whole tournament after day one. That was the defining moment by far. It'll never happen to me again. I don't think it'll ever happen to anybody again. Going through a 10 day tournament, never being all in, it's impossible basically. So I was very fortunate, very lucky. I was not gonna make the call, I was gonna fold, I was still gonna be at about 25, 30,000, which was fine, a triple what I started with, I would have been okay. But the guy got so angry that I was taking so long to make the call. And I had talked about, back then you were allowed to talk about what you had in your hand, so I said, I'm not wasting time, I have bottom set. And he got freaked out and called the, the floor man and said, you're not allowed to say what's in your hand. He said, yes, he actually is, because all the action's done. Yeah. He's making a decision, yeah, he's just talking action. out loud. Yeah. And then I took even more time and he called a clock on me and I looked in his eyes and I just said, there is no way you'd be so angry if you had me. And it was weird, a guy laid down aces on the turn. He laid down aces and said, I can't believe I laid down aces. And I believed him, this is the way the hand played out. It was very odd the way the hand played out. But I put the guy, there was a 10 jack queen on the board. I put him on jacks or queens. So all I had was bottom set and I called and I was right, you know, I was lucky. Um, all he had was ace queen. I knew that I was not one of the best players in the world and I knew that I was playing against, I, w I felt a little intimidated. Johnny Chan and I were coaching at that time and he felt like, listen, I have a style. I was winning a lot of really small tournaments around LA, you know, 20 grand, 50 grand, 70 grand, but nothing huge. But I was winning them consistently and I didn't realize how tough it is. Now I think about it, I used to win one or two tournaments a week. It's not that easy. I mean, three to five hundred people, it's still some of the best players in the world are at the Commerce and the Bike and the Hustler. I didn't realize how on my game I was back then because I was doing something nobody had ever done before, talking people in and out of their hand. I mean, people do it to an extent, but nobody had ever done it as a style of play to the extent that I was doing it that way. I was using a strategy that nobody was prepared for. So I wasn't about playing so many hands. It was about the hands that I was playing and the way that I was basically telling the truth. And nobody thought any poker player would ever tell the truth. I do feel that the game has completely changed. Even if they hadn't changed, they changed the rules. So there's a, a rule where I can't do this anymore. There are a lot of players like Danny Negreanu who are very vocal about feeling the way that I'm feeling, that poker's supposed to be a psychological game. These kids who are coming up and playing on the internet, playing 400 tournaments in a month, they have so much more experience and they're such better players that I felt like I had to find out what was going on and change my style and that's when I hooked up with the Maven who learned most of what he learned from Ari. You know, between the two of them and a couple of their friends, the best online tournament players in the world and you know, the Maven was the 2008 player of the year and um, I just hooked up with him a couple of days ago and I, so, I believe so strongly in his system and his style and I've learned so much just in a day. I did a day of training yesterday and it's unbelievable how I've changed my game. It's extraordinary. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to talk about it. It's so funny, people say, how come you haven't won again? I only had one goal. I wanted to win the World Series of Poker. I did that. I don't need to win it again to prove anything to anybody. It'd be great, but that's not what my goal was. My goal was to then give back. And, and as long as people still care about me, which they do right now, I have an ability to raise money to get people to come to events. You know, I've done, I think, 66 charity events now, and I've helped raise $110 million. I'm not bragging about it. I hope that everybody does more than I do. But I know that I'm doing my part to give back and help the world.